r slash ask reddit lawyers of reddit what is the stupidest case anyone has ever come to you with wanting to sue i did some work experience at a law firm and a case popped up about a couple who were walking on a wall and fell off they wanted to sue the person who owned the wall i've done some insurance coverage work i am sure they wanted to sue everyone who has ever even looked at the wall i've seen a wall before should i be concerned edit Thank you to all the kind and helpful lawyers. However, I've decided to live as an outlaw. This seems to be where my life has been leading. I promise to only steal things from jerks. When I was 19 years old, I was sued by a 50 something year old redneck for $10.000 because I caused him to lose the will to live. Apparently 10k was the magic number to talk him out of suicide. Please explain. Edit. Wow. As you requested, everyone in the U.S. with car insurance has a maximum the driver can be sued for that insurance will cover slash represent. My insurance would cover me for up to $10.000. This is advantageous for people looking to make a little money because insurance companies would rather throw the plaintiff some money and settle than waste time and money to go to court. However, if someone were to sue for more than $10.000. 000 i would have to hire my own attorney and unless the plaintiff had a strong case he wouldn't be getting anything at all i accidentally rear-ended a guy going less than 10 miles per hour my airbags didn't deploy he drove an old clunker truck so my insurance gave him quite a bit of money for his troubles considering no damage was really done it wasn't enough for him he then tried to file a medical claim but that didn't fly. My insurance sponsored attorney found out he was addicted to painkillers so he'd been in pain for a while. At that point, this redneck hit the lowest of the low. When I was a teenager I was served papers stating I was being sued for $10.000 because I caused this man to lose the will to live. Does that sound frivolous to you? It should. Well, on the morning of the deposition, I met the plaintiff's attorney. He was actually a pretty nice guy. He sat right next to me and said, Hey, I'm sorry about this. I've got to put food on the table. You know, my insurance ended up settling with a guy for about $3.500. I hope his attorney took half. Edit. Accidentally a word. I know a paramedic and they told me this story. I was out at a restaurant with some of my friends. There was a guy sitting behind us who went into cardiac arrest. I was still a trainee so I decided to give him CPR. I kept his heart pumping for 3 minutes before the ambulance arrived. He lived. 3 weeks later I received a lawsuit complaining that I had broke one of the man's ribs. I saved his life and he was suing me because I did minor damage. Somewhat related note, my EMT instructor told us of how he had a young female patient in cardiac arrest at the mall. He needed to defibrillate. Being a rookie, he forgot to remove the woman's bra, which had a metal underwear. When he shocked her, her bra lit on fire, causing second degree burns to her breasts. He went to the hospital with flowers to apologize. The patient forgave him and thanked him profusely for saving her life. That turned out better than expected. Yay. I met with this guy who wanted to sue a library because I had banned him. For one day, apparently, he was being disruptive and the administrator told him that he was banned for one day. Fortunately, I was able to convince him what a monumentally stupid idea this was. Well so on what grounds would you like to sue them? He was a big meanie face. I believe the correct legal term is poopy face. I'm a law student currently so I don't have any cases of my own yet, but one of my favorites I've studied was about a woman who was in a major car accident and her defense was that she knew she could fly because Batman can fly, and therefore it wasn't her fault. PSH. Batman can't fly. Everyone knows he falls with style. I am not sure if this really counts as stupid, but I had a prospective client who wanted sue for infringement of his patents on PVC piping. He wanted 20 quadrillion dollars dollars four times over. He also had a computer chip implanted in his brain by the FBI. I sent him to the local hospital that specialized in implanted computer chips. I feel like that's an ingenious ruse to get paranoid schizophrenics into a psych ward. Brain chip removal specialists inside. Now just stay in this padded room until the doctor comes. Also you should wear this jacket so you don't get cold. Edit. Added quotation marks. It would be a tie between two. 
A woman wanted to sue because Dr. Pepper bottle caps had cut her fingers twice over a three year period. A man wanted to sue Walgreens because it used pictures of his secretary's children and it's ad without her permission. Not sure he has standing. What, you can definitely sue for using your image or your children's images in an advertisement without permission. Uh, Dr. Pepper may need to pay the woman. Walgreens guy. Two scenarios come to mind. He's suing on her behalf, with her permission, because she lacks the financial resources to mount a proper suit. She should be a party to the case if this is what happened so as to provide standing. As an employee, she may have given the company some fairly broad rights to use her, or her family's, likeness for advertising purposes in her employment contract and Walgreens is stepping on those rights. But Please no one bring up hot coffee. Every time anyone brings up tort reform it's always the hot coffee case. But that woman had legitimate grounds for a lawsuit. It was so met of you to bring up the hot coffee case by requesting nobody talk about the hot coffee case. Nice. Here's a today I learned for you. Paralipsis. Someone came in because their neighbor had done some gardening along the boundary between their front lawns. The client wanted to know whether she could sue the neighbor for trespass for the pebbles that had come onto the client's side, and theft for the soil that had gone onto the neighbor's side. This would be my neighbor, except instead of gardening, it'd be mowing. How dare you mow my lawn? Whoa, I think that woman deserves a face punch sandwich with a side of another face punch. One time I had a client who was being sued by a business rival. The whole case was pretty bullcrap. His rival waked in and slipped on a fresh puddle of water, like he didn't see it, and hurt himself. Well the owner was a huge cheapskate so he immediately flipped out. He almost had a heart attack when I told him I wouldn't charge him anything if we lost. Anyway that day believe it or not I slipped in a puddle of water and hurt my already bad back. I told the young guy who was mopping he would have to fill in for me because he looked like a capable guy. I was more or less joking. But he took it seriously so I gave him my briefcase. The day of the trial, my client's rival put on a huge sob story and everyone fell for it. The guy defending my client could not open the briefcase. He eventually opened it by flipping the lock. Yep, inside he found my secret weapon. A Krabby Patty. At this point the client revealed that he was faking and was just trying to get the recipe. At the end of the day the recipe was kept safe. Mr. Krabs got a wet floor sign. And Spongebob went back to being a fry cook. That was a good day. Wait, so how do you get a puddle underwater? It could have been a puddle of goo. Like the goo lagoon. Goo has a higher density than water. I did a pro bono case for a street clown who wanted to sue another street clown for stealing his routine. You can't copyright a routine because it isn't stored in a medium. I told him that but he insisted we try to break some new legal ground. More like pro bozo. Couldn't he have filmed his routine? I guess it's too late to do so after clown B has stolen it. But it seems to me that at least in the future there's a way to store his routine in a medium. I got sued once for hitting a guy in my ram charger. It was my fault but he tried to play me and lost horribly. He got into the ambulance at the scene. Then decided against it and said he was fine. The same cop gave us both a ride home. He proceeds to go to a bar. Get drunk and fall off a brass stool and hurt his back. Now he's hurt enough to go to a hospital. He sues but neglects to mention this fact to anyone. My lawyer ripped him apart in court and I never had to pay a dime other than what insurance paid for his car. Afterwards my lawyer told me that was the most fun he's ever had on a case. Edited to add, I have another one. 2. Someone is currently suing a family member because she veered into the left hand lane making a right hand turn. Causing this family member to sideswipe them. No idea how that one is going to turn out. But I can't wait to find out. I have yet another one. 2. I almost got scammed 12 years ago. It was the maddest I've ever seen a cop. I rear-ended a lady in a Toyota 4x4 doing about 10 miles per hour. We were pulling off at a stoplight and she hit her brakes. Brake lights, setting sun and I hit her. The only part of my truck to impact her vehicle was a tow hook about 3 inches long and an inch wide. The entire left side of her back bumper was pushed in. A taillight broken. And minor body damage. I don't have pictures but it was very clear that there was no way my impact could have caused all that. She claimed otherwise. And very loudly to the officer that reported to the scene. 
He was furious. He tells me that I am free to go and I waste no time doing so. As I pulled off he was giving her the drill instructor treatment. My lawyer husband had a woman come into his office with this gem. She wanted to sue a large grocery chain because her baby's fingers had gotten hurt in one of their carts. How so? Well, all she did was put her baby in the cart. You know, down underneath the cart on that shelf where the babies go, baby's fingers were dangling down and the mom ran over its fingers. Several times. Stories like this make me want to steal babies. I got a call at my office from a distraught man. I was at a bar last night, there was a cute lady on the next brass tool, we got to talking, and she seemed interested in me, we adjourned to the back of my van for some fun sexy times, after about 10 minutes, I was horrified to discover that she had a dog, can you sue this person for me, because now I'm afraid that I'll get AIDS and die like a faggot, sorry, I don't do that kind of work, but good luck, does that make this a pro bono case? You look at the stars. Poor Colby. I'm surprised they didn't sue the dog. My dad is a lawyer. And he had one person come in that wanted to sue McDonald because she got her cheeseburger upside down in the bag at McDonald's instead of right side up. He also had a person come in. And he couldn't walk because of some injury at work. At the time. My dad was skeptical so he hired a psychologist to do an examination on him. And she found out that something could be wrong. But she couldn't put her finger on it. Jump to next week. My dad ends up with a video in his hands of the person walking down their driveway to take out the trash. Busted. So my dad called them and told them hey come on in. We have a breakthrough in your case. And you can get some money for your injury. So the guy comes to his office. And he leaves him sitting in the lobby for almost an hour because my dad knows this guy is a scumbag just trying to get money over nothing. Which makes lawyers look bad. So then my dad calls him into the meeting room and plays the video. The guy walked out. I'm kinda late to all of this and I'm not a lawyer but here we go. Around 7 or 8 years ago a woman fell together with her balcony onto my mother's car. This woman was around around 55 years old so she ended up with lots of broken bones and some pretty nasty bruises. Considering that my mom's car pretty much saved her ducking life. She would have fallen from a greater height and onto rough concrete hadn't it been there. She decided it was a good idea to sue us. It's important to note here that. Uh, it was her ducking fault that she fell as she decided that wasting her money on safety checks was of no use. Therefore, no insurance money. B. Our car insurance sued her for some of the damage she caused. We paid most of it. Ms. Thick as a brick decides to sue my mother for parking her car there. She claimed that she would have been better off if it weren't there. Which by any logic was complete bullshit. Well guess what happened she lost the case. As a result, she now had to pay both for the damage she caused. A fraction of her medical bill. She had medical insurance. And the lawyer fees for both herself and my mother. This is the point where she exhibits excellent cognitive skills and logic. She decides to move without informing the authorities. My mom notices the moving crew and decides to follow her to her new address. She writes down the address and eventually provides our insurance with it since the woman stopped responding to her mail. All of this got her in more trouble than she already was. To top it all off, the investigation caused by the latter eventually led to the police finding out she and her husband were connected to a human trafficking network. TLDR. Woman decides to be a greedy dunt and ends up being busted for human trafficking. Kinda. Quite the escalation at the end fell from a balcony. TLDR a slave trader. Not a lawyer. But in my law class the teacher told us a bunch of awesome stories which I shall now share. So mom is doing coke with her 3 year old son around. She ends up doing too much and passes out. Dropping her coke lighter on a coffee table. Junior comes around and sees the lighter. And picks it up. He wonders if it would glow as he held it under his shirt and lit it. He was horribly burned, disfigured, and has a life of constant pain now. So once his coked up mom regains consciousness, she decides to sue the lighter company because it was totally their fault for not putting a keep out of reach of children sticker on it. She actually wins an insane amount of money, which I imagine went straight to heroin since she can now afford it. Duck spending any to help her son in any way, and now lighters have a keep out of reach of children sticker on them. Edit, coke, equals crack. 
I imagine went straight to heroin since she can now afford it FYI. Heroin cheaper than coke. Something tells me OP doesn't know what coke is. Firefighters were called when they heard barking coming from the locked trunk of a vehicle. Although it was 61 degrees, animals were still locked in the trunk of the car. So the firefighters decided to use force to get them out. The owner of the dogs and the vehicle decided to sue stating that I put them back there because I didn't want them in the cabin. Because they will unlock the door. Shipman said, those pups cost about $1.000 each. I don't want somebody to just reach in there and steal them. Here is the link to the story. Ha, huh, I can actually see where the owners were coming from with this. 61 degrees is fairly cool so the owners decided to keep the dogs in the car. Seems reasonable so far. The dogs are small and will jump on the automatic locks if not watched. They are expensive dogs and could be easily stolen so they put them in a cool, safe place without automatic locks and out of sight. They say they left the back seat, assuming connects to the trunk, cracked slightly to allow for airflow. The actions seem very reasonable and safe for the dogs. Some people actually have very clean empty trunks. The firefighters don't bother to look for the owners and instead must have forced the trunk open to do $5,000 of damage. I would be fairly pissed if someone broke into my car on a 60 something degree day to free my dog. I hear what you are saying but shouldn't the correct method really be? 1. Put puppies in carrier or cage where they cannot get loose and do damage to themselves or the car or interfere with your driving. 2. Put carrier slash cage in car. 3. Still crack a window if you plan to leave them, one way or the other. Imo, they still should have cracked a window, if the dogs are that valuable. Why would you set up a situation in which you leave them alone in a car for that amount of time? It seems to me that if you are going to complain about it afterwards you ought to plan your day when you are taking a couple of $1000 dogs around. I can see walking into a convenience store for a few minutes but it seems irresponsible to leave them like that and go to a party. Just an opinion. Not a lawyer but my aunt tried to sue some of my older cousins for defamation because, wait for it, they talked bad about her on Facebook, clapping. Depending on the country and what was said, depending on how bad they talked about her, isn't that exactly what defamation libel lawsuits are there for? I had a crazy older client who was suing his minister for seducing his younger wife and convincing her to dump him. He came in with the wife he abandoned for the younger wife. The guy was absolutely nuts. Some idiot signed him up and filed the suit and I inherited it. I spent hours telling the guy he did not have a case and finally had to withdraw against his will. It was a bit sticky because the judge was grumpy. Some states you can sue for that. Alienation of affection. North Carolina. If I recall correctly. Kinda bullshit if you ask me. There are a lot of nuts who want lawyers to help them. I've gotten calls from a guy who think there is a conspiracy against him run by the government and the Hispanics. That's not the only conspiracy theorist who is called, either. I've also gotten calls from people who probably read too much reddit. Can I sue the cops because they talked to me for an hour at my house but it turns out I didn't do anything wrong so they shoulder left me alone? Yep, that's a good case. I totally want to spend my time on getting you the compensation you deserve for having to talk to cops for an hour. I've gotten calls from a guy who think there is a conspiracy against him run by the government and the Hispanics. But Ted Nugent called you? Sweet. Law student here. One of the best cases studied so far. Katko v. Bryner. 1971. An elderly couple owned a boarded up old house on some property where they didn't actually live, and they grew tired of trespassers coming onto the land. Apparently it happened frequently. Finally, after no trespassing signs failed, Mr. Bryner cleaned and oiled a 20 gauge shotgun, rigged it to a bed frame and the house aimed at the bedroom door, and ran a wire from the gun's trigger to the doorknob. He figured problem solved. One day Katko decides to break into the house and steal some old bottles and other items he considered to be antiques. He comes in by removing some window boards, opens the bedroom door, and, boom, the 20 gauge blows his entire right leg clear and away. Katko survived and sued the Brinnies. The case went to the Supreme Court of Iowa and Katko won on the basis that one only gets the privilege to use deadly force if an intruder threatens death or great bodily harm. Since the Brinnies were only protecting property and not their lives, they have no privilege for an awesome drone cannon in their shed. 
Not so unreasonable. Just strange to imagine a criminal who commences an unlawful action gaining a claim against the person being wronged. TL. Doctor don't use automated turrets to defend your property. You'll probably be liable to the burglars that they maim. Edit. Emphasize that I don't think this ruling was unreasonable. Obviously undiscriminating drone gun turrets for home protection are bad news bears. I just thought the case was an example of stupidity and rusting. In fact. In response to this ruling several states enacted reactionary Briner bills geared toward protecting those defending their homes, families or property. A Nebraska Act passed stating that no person shall be placed in jeopardy for defending by any means those things. Fortunately, that legislation was held to be unconstitutional. I have to agree with the court's decision here. Blowing someone's leg off isn't a reasonable response to someone who isn't threatening your person. In any case I still think that automated shotgun thing was pretty irresponsible. Consider for example if the intruder had instead been a firefighter called out to a fire on the property. Oh. Wait. That's not my good one. I used to work for the attorney general in my home jurisdiction. A guy who'd had his children taken away for some really horrible abuse. He was crazy and had really batshit religious beliefs. Tried to get his kids back by claiming they were his intellectual property. He sent notices that he'd copyrighted the kids. And demands for their return. Then he got the idea that his name and all his kids names were trademarks. So every time he received a court document that referenced any of their names. He sent us an invoice for trillions of dollars for each use of his trademarks. ETA. I guess this doesn't really fit the bill since the dude wasn't coming to me to sue someone. But it was still pretty remarkable. When I was working for a NJ judge, we did mostly cases with the Division of Youth and Family Services, negligent custody, adoptions, etc. This case technically was the government suing for custody, and it wasn't stupid. The parents never fed, clothed, sent their children to school, or otherwise let them out of the house, in addition to beating them. At any rate, this case was recurring and involved parents who claimed to belong to the Moorish nation. HTTP, colon slash slash, en, Wikipedia, or Wiki Moorish Science Temple of America their entire legal defense was that they were descended from Moors, and the United States government had no power over them. Not only was the government powerless over the Moors, but by taking the children, we were also committing mass, worldwide genocide. Additionally, we were committing piracy, rape, and various other religious transgressions. What was most surprising to me was that their brief to the court seemed to have been written by someone with at least some legal training, but it only cited ancient Roman, and other old world, civil law. Multiple treaties between African and European states, a few completely off-point cases from like Wyoming and Ohio traffic court, and a copious amount of religious law that I was never able to find at all. Needless to say, we placed the kids with foster parents, despite a riot in the courtroom, because the entire church showed up. Luckily the brief and parents testimony described in comprehensive, vivid detail how I am going to burn in the eternal flames of damnation. So I have something to look forward to. I worked in a forensic engineering company for a little while. I saw a case where a skateboarder was hitching, holding onto the back of a truck without their consent, and hit a bump in the road. Somehow fell down and the truck ran over him. Terrible injuries. Paralyzed from the waist down. Reading the depositions and seeing the pictures was incredibly sad and gruesome. Anyways, long story short. The skateboarder sues the city for a shitton of money and wins. I don't remember the specifics, but it was heavy into the seven figures. Can someone explain to me how the city was at fault in this? Supposedly there was a manhole protruding farther than it should be and was not up to code. That's about it. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.